welcome back and now we're all the way up to part 16 of this tutorial series where we're building a quiz application with AngularJS and in this video we're going to start implementing some very basic error handling in our quiz. If we are on the final question and we click continue that would typically mean we're at the end of the quiz so we want to move on to the results page but if we click continue here it takes us back to question one now at that point we want to just display a quick prompt up here that just says by the way you haven't answered all questions in case people are wondering what's going on okay so to do that we'll come back into our quiz controller and in here where we set active question inside the while loop when we check this line of code here to see if we're less than quiz length and if we're not we reset to zero when we reset to zero that means we're skipping back because we've reached the end of the quiz and there's still unanswered questions and that's the point in time we want to display the error so then we'll just put in a conditional here that just says if vm dot active question equals zero which means it's just been reset to zero by this line of code here so this won't run at the very start of the quiz for example it's only when it gets reset by this line this will trigger and then we'll set vm dot error which we haven't created yet to true and then we'll come back up to here and create vm.error and set it to false initially and then we set it to true here and now we need to create the error itself so the error will be just above the question here so we'll put it inside this row but just above the question and we'll give it a bootstrap class of alert and alert danger and then inside here we'll give it a button so that the user can close it and we'll make it ampersand times which will make it just a little x and we'll give it the class of close and an ng click so that if it, the user clicks this we will set quiz.error to false. So we don't have to always have a function in ng-click. We can also just have a declaration like this. So we can say quiz.error equals false. And that will set that to false. And then, of course, we're going to have to add an ng-show onto here so that this alert only shows when the error equals true. So ng show equals quiz dot error so quiz dot error is already a boolean of true or false so it will typically be false and then if the user does try to do something that throws this error up here sets it to true then this will display and then we have this little close button that when clicked sets error to false and that will get rid of all of that and then we want to actually display an error message. So we'll say, error, you have not answered all of the questions. Save that and come back into our quiz. And now if we skip to question 10 and then click continue, we get error, you have not answered all of the questions. With the little X over here, which we can click, and that gets rid of it. Happy days. Okay, so now there's just one last little sanity check that we need to add into our code, which is in our quiz controller. So we're checking here if the number of questions answered is greater than the total number of questions, but just in case there's some weird thing that's happened, like a user has submitted the same question twice because we're not checking that here. We're just saying if the user has clicked continue, this function gets triggered. And then if 
the question that they click continue on is selected, then increment the number of questions answered. So there's nothing stopping them from clicking on question two, clicking continue, well, answering it, clicking continue, and that will increment questions answered, and then going back to question two and clicking continue again. And it's already been answered, but that's going to increment this again. So that means we might get to a point where we have number of questions answered greater than the total number of questions while all the questions haven't actually been answered. So even though we're inside of this if statement, it doesn't necessarily mean the user is at the end of the quiz. So we just want to have a quick sanity check and have a for loop where we loop through all of the questions and just check that they're all answered. So for var i equals zero, i is less than quiz length i plus plus, and then we'll just say if data service dot quiz questions i dot selected equals null. So we're just looping through and checking if any of them have a selected property equal to null, which would mean that they have an answer or a question that isn't answered. And if they do in fact have a question that isn't answered, then we want to set active question and then we know what question isn't answered so we can just pass i in directly and that will skip this part and just set the active question directly to what we passed in. So that's a nice added benefit of modifying that function. And then of course we want to return. So we don't want to continue the for loop and we don't want to continue down here and run this again. We just want to return from this function because we've already set the active question again and the user is now on a new question and everything's reset. So we just want to return. And then when we break out of this for loop, so if we do get to this line of code after the for loop, that means that we've never returned from here, which means this if statement never triggered, which obviously means that all of the questions have indeed been answered. And in that case, we can set VM error equal to false. So just in case they do have the error displaying and they didn't close it themselves, we'll set that to false. Then we will set VM dot finalize, which is something that we haven't created yet, but we will. We set that to true. And then we will return from this function because again, we don't want to get down to this line of code. So we will return. And now we'll scroll up to the top and we'll create vm.finalize. vm.finalize equals false by default. And now what we're going to do with this finalize property is create another bit of HTML that just displays when all of the questions have been answered, it just displays a little prompt to ask the user, are they sure? that they want to continue to the results page. And the markup for that is what we're gonna be creating in the next part. So stick around for that and I will see you then. For those of you that haven't checked out my website yet, I do a full article write-up for every single video that I put out on YouTube and that will include code snippets and other little things that will help you along. The link to the write-up for the current video is on the bottom left of the screen. And if you just want to continue watching this video series, then just click the link in the center of the screen and we'll get started with the next video.